L'amour prend conscience. L'amour rend service. L'amour ne jalouse pas. Il ne se vante pas. Ne se gonfle pas d'orgueil. Il ne fait rien de malhonnête. Il ne cherche pas son intérêt. Il ne s'emporte pas. Il n'entretient pas de rancune. Il ne se réjouit pas de ce qui est mal, mais il trouve sa joie dans ce qui est vrai. Il supporte tout. Il fait confiance en tout. Il espère tout. Il endure tout. L'amour ne passera jamais. Un jour, les prophéties disparaîtront. Le long des temps L'essence que nous avons de Dieu disparaîtra. En effet, notre connaissance est partielle. Nos prophéties sont partielles. Quand viendra la chair de moi, ce qui est partiel disparaîtra. Quand j'étais un enfant, je parlais comme un enfant. Je pensais comme un enfant. Je raisonnais comme un enfant. Maintenant, je suis un homme. Je fais disparaître ce qui vous est de moi en enfant. Nous voyons actuellement les rivages obscurs dans ce miroir. Ce jour-là, nous verrons face à face. Actuellement, ma connaissance est partielle. Ce jour-là, je connaîtrai vraiment comme Dieu m'a connu. Ce qui demeure aujourd'hui, c'est la foi l'espérance et la charité. Mais la plus grande des trois, c'est la charité. The word of the Lord.
Jesus began speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all who spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will put me this proper physician, cure yourself, and say, Do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elijah the prophet. Yet, not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman, the city. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and they left him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through their midst, through the midst of them, and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Thank you. 
understand and accept it because you chose to accept all who can at the name of God. We serve a mighty God. I believe this gospel challenges us. It's a chance to check ourselves and our own motivation. What are we really coming to church for? Are we looking at Jesus for a special place in heaven? Are we looking at Jesus just to say, me, me, and me, and not anybody else? But Jesus says God's kingdom is set up like a vineyard. And the owner of that vineyard pays the one who gets hired at the last minute the same wage as the one who was toiling all day in the sun. Jesus said that God is like a shepherd who leaves the 99 cents of the while he goes out searching high and low for the way of one. He told a story about a son who had really messed up his life. He wanted his inheritance. He went off and party real hard. He spent all this money on loose women and music and fun. He ran out of money and he said, what can I do? I know what I can do. I can go back and ask my father. He said, I will come and become a lonely servant. As he was journeying home, his father looked at him. He saw him far away. He was so happy to see his son. He said, skin the fat cat. Bring him a robe, put a ring around his finger, and put shoes on his feet. The good news is my son, he was dead, but now he is alive. God does that for you and I, my sisters and brothers. A lot of us look at our lives and think we got it going on good. But at the end of the day, God's not going to ask you what the square footage of your house is. He's going to ask you how many people did you help to get that house. God's going to get asked you about the flashy clothes that you have hanging in your closet. He'll ask you how many clothes did you give away to help those who didn't have any. God's not going to ask you about your material possessions. He's going to ask you about the material possessions if they dictated your life or you use them to help others.
situation is getting bad, when it seems like you can't make it through, put your faith in Jesus. He's on the throne. We serve the mighty God. I want to thank God for you here today. I want to ask a blessing upon you and your family. And I ask that God will cloak in a road of salvation, right on the mantle of justice. Make your face shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. God bless you. Oh, my God. 
blessed apostles and all the saints who are pleased to throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
a saint for months. Please be seated. Before we conclude our, our tremendous celebration of faith and, and culture, I have a few um, words of thanks uh, and also a special message uh, from our Archbishop. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank His Excellency Bishop Key Sansari uh, from the Diocese of Brooklyn for being our principal celebrant.
Can there be any clearer statement of God's eternal love for each one of us from the womb to the tomb than these words from the prophet Jeremiah in today's reading? In the throwaway culture that Pope Francis so often decries, we saw actual celebrations at the passage of the bill that makes it even easier to dispose of a life that someone might find inconvenient or troublesome for any reason at all. Those who told us that abortion had, uh, had to remain safe, legal, and, and rare now have made it dangerous, imposed, and frequent. We also had to watch and listen as our governor proudly proclaimed his descent from this and other clear church teachings as if it were a badge of honor and used an out-of-context quote from Pope Francis as an applause line. I'm a pastor not a politician, and as a pastor, I am obliged to challenge our political leaders, to urge them to re-examine their priorities, and to respect and protect the unborn baby of the woman as strongly and passionately as we would the undocumented immigrant, the single mom worried about how she will feed her family, our dying grandparents, or the poor struggling to make it. At the same time, we can recall the words of St. Paul in his moving letter to the, to the Corinthians from today's Bible readings. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. No matter how the hurt, frustration, and disappointment, and yes, even the anger we may feel now at the passage of this horrible and grisly bill, we should not respond with more bitterness and divisiveness, but continue to put our trust in the Lord and ask for His guidance and inspiration. Thank God we have the promise of Jesus that not even the gates of hell will prevail. With gratitude for your attention and promising my prayers as I ask for yours, I am faithfully in Christ, Timothy Michael Park, Archbishop of